Shalom, we praise to you. Howa Ba Hashem El Shai Ba Hashem Kudash. Double honors unto the apostles and elders of Great Millstone and Ruel. And Shalom to the whole four lakh. This is Paya Allah. The title of this video will be determined upon the upload. Um, basically, um, this is inspired by um, some recent events, but just more or less. Um, Maybe a, a, a you know a, a tool to add to your toolbox, your toolkit. Um, when um, dealing with this faith and persevering through all the hardships you endure, and to frame everything as you know, always look at you know when they say you know, is is a cup, you no know, half full or half empty. You always gotta look at it like it's half full, like you know. It's good, and it can only get better, right? As opposed to, it's bad, and I need more to make it good. Because uh, then you'll overlook the good that you actually have, because you got a cup for one, and you got something in the cup, as opposed to what you don't have in a cup, or, you know and overlooking what you do have in a cup, and even the fact that you have a cup anyway. So, you know, you have people within the faith. <laughs> it may be things that um, happen, um, judgments that get handed down, and, um, you know, you might not be looked at in the best of light in certain uh, situations and whatnot, but, hey, man, you you, you believe in Yahweh Ba'ashem, Yahweh Ba'ashem, Yahweh Ba'ashem, right? So you believe in his will. So you should always look at it like, this is something that's gonna, it's for the better of me, for myself. And even sometimes throughout the course of that uh, tribulation, you might actually kind of, because you should be pondering on why these things transpired. It should be like, did I, was it because I mistreated this brother? Or was it when I went off on this day and I did this or whatever? It'd always really be, being circumspect and you know um as it says um i forget where it's how it's worded but um least ye be reprobate um that's it read very, very quickly so it says second corinthians 13 and 5 examine yourselves whether ye be in the faith prove your own selves know ye not your own selves, how that Yahweh Shai Mashiach is in you, except he be reprobates. So yeah, it's basically a thing of like any situation should you should, you know, kind of size it up and think, all right, what's what's happening, what's going on, and um, even like I've had things where you may even locate the source, but by the time. <laughs> The f things are said and done. That's not even the issue no more, and you kind of realize that that being the issue that kind of set every the ball in motion, even though it may not have been something that great, it was it was a catalyst that was needed to get to the point in your rap for you to build up, build up, be built up in faith, right, and to really show your faith. All right, because at the end of the day, if these things didn't happen, you know, the things that would be for the sake of you proving that you're faithful to the, the Heavenly Father, His Son, for the Holy Spirit, Yahweh, Ba'asham, Yahushai, Ba'asham, Harakar, Kudash, wouldn't have transpired and no one would have ever knew these things. <laughs> so that's how it goes, man. You know, this just this is just how the cookie crumbles, as they say. But it's just how, you know, it's how things happen man and you just gotta go with it at the end of the day you know and um there's no hard feelings in this right as long as you look at it through the eye the the the, um, the, the perspective that i'm you know i'm out i'm outlining to you and not only that just it boils down to it's part of you bearing your cross all right because when we deal with it our lord who is our savior who is our master all right, and who we are servants to, he said the servant is not greater than the master. And if you know anything about Yahweh Shai, 
he suffered wrongfully on a major scale. He came to deliver the children of Israel. And even the high priest understood that, but it still was at the helm of leading um, the people to basically crucify him. So even though it was known that he was righteous and the way he came to do, he still was, you know, suffered a, 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 a brutal death, all right, being a sacrifice unto the, the benefit of them all, even though the wicked scribes and Pharisees. So you should always know and keep that in the back of your mind that, man, shit's going to happen. And at the end of the day, yeah, you might get in your feelings, all right? You might sit there and think, like, what the fuck, man? Like, I know this this ain't, you know, it's mind, it might, might be mind-boggling, like, what the fuck? Like, why is this happening? You know, you feel some kind of a way emotionally. But in reality, bro, it's just, this is what's happening, man. The main thing you have to worry about is not that issue. It's, am I of the elect? That's all that matters, all right? So you... <laughs> Worrying about certain things, it's neither here nor there, man. You just got to do the work. Even if brothers, you know, um, distance themselves from you, yeah, it is where it is, man. It's, it's, it's how it has to go. You always, I'm kind of be, going to be rambling as opposed to getting a lot of scriptures out. This ain't going to be like my usual kind of videos. This ain't really, it's a spiritual rambling. But, um, yeah, you might look at it like, oh, these brothers, you know, they're not around me no more. They don't, they kind of look down on me, whatever. But in reality, this is the thing. I've had seasons in my lifetime. I'm in a new season. I was in a, a different season a few months ago. I've transitioned into a new season. And I've had a few seasons like this, say, like every two, three years, moving to a whole different kind of season. I'm not around the same people not in the same environments, may not live in the same place, may be dealing with different things and different circumstances, but that is of necessity, it is the environment that's re required in order to manifest what needs to manifest in, to, in order to w withdraw uh, a new entity from within your spirit. So you need to overlook it like, the Lord is just setting things up according to what I need before me, for me to do what I need. Same way, you know, that certain brother or, you know, or even you want to deal with it in a carnal sense, your woman or certain girls are around you. There's a reason, all right? And then the thing is, they might come back later. They might not come back. They might come back, you know, it might have been the last time I ever see them. Like, there's one girl, I, I used to date her when I was fucking, how old was I? When I was 19. I didn't even date her. I saw her once. Then I just bumped into her randomly a few years ago. And then when I was talking to her, I found out she seen me at camp, which was, and she had pictures, because she sent me the picture, like, what, what happened to you? Why are you doing this? <laughs> yeah, she was funny. But that just shows you it's seasonable. You know how many people have been in and out of my life throughout that whole, like, I'm talking a 10-year period, 10, 9, 8-year period that I haven't seen her. And I just bumped into her then. And then she wasn't around and she is around. It just goes, that's how. So you just got to look at everything like, look, this is the circumstances as of now. This is the world of Heavenly Father. Let me deal with it. And just keep that perspective that, look, everything that's happening is for the will of the Heavenly Father. And Lord willing, I'll be a vessel unto righteousness, a vessel unto election. So I'm just going to read this scripture, and Lord willing, you'll be edified. So this is Matthew 16, 24. Then said Yahweh Shai unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself. So all these things I've just, this, this rambling that I just, you know, put forward to you, Ark, or Akwaf, was what? was about you denying yourself you not looking at it like look man i'm in the right those brothers or that person should not be saying that to me because you you didn't know what transpired now nah, fall back bro yo blood like be easy relax calm yourself because in reality everything's happening through the world heavenly father and there's people that have rule over you within the spirit and they're doing these things their judgment is to, to try and test you. I know there's a scripture in Jeremiah about, um, I was to, I think I found it a while ago because I was looking for it before, but about giving um, shepherds 
over you to try your spirit or to try your heart. Something to that effect. Pastors try your heart, something to that effect. So there may even be moments. You, and this is the thing about, you know, the things that I ran the four time I ran for learning. That's why I haven't done a video on that. But I had a series where I always got into accounts where just different things happen throughout the course of our history that are reflective of things you need to keep in the forefront of your mind. One of the one of the greatest things that you can always keep keep in mind dealing with rank and um, how you know you gotta deal with things is like King Saul and King David. King Saul was was not he did he weren't feeling David, bruv. He he didn't like him, didn't like him one bit. He was he was you know mad you know ch chafed like he, he weren't feeling him, all right. But guess what? <laughs> David didn't care. He said, that's the anointed of the Heavenly Father. I have to respect him. Even in death, when he was anointed the new king, when someone was chatting shit about him, he still upheld the same esteem towards King Saul. And King Saul ain't no one to, you know, in the spirit to regard in no kind of way. But that shows you that's an honourable thing. That's a great character. So that's the same mindset you need to bear. Because the men that, listen, you can't, the apostles, you can't walk in them shoes, man. As much as you might say to yourself, yeah, if I was there, I'd... you weren't there, though, bro. You're not that guy. So fall the fuck back, relax, you know? So that's how it is. So that's why you got to deny yourself, all right, and really just be like, look, this is my lot. This is my position. I sit in, and I just need to fill out my space. I need to, I need to, everything I'm meant to be, it's one of these things or uh, concept. You know, they deal with, um, in the red pill, they talk about frame. Frame is a powerful thing because sometimes you may frame yourself in accordance with how you believe you should be. But there's a way that Heavenly Father's made you. And this is something I kind of realise the more I've dealt with people in the world, spirit, you know, in the camp, camps, whatever it may be. But you kind of, you know, sometimes people perceive you a certain way. Like they may think you're a certain type of person, and you're not even you're you're so not that person. <laughs> it's actually kind of funny, you know that person. But then it maybe you are that person, all right? Maybe you actually are that person, but you're just denying who you really are, all right? So you actually have to live up to that, and that's going back to what that being your lot. You're sitting there thinking, you know, you know, I'm, I'm trying, I'm I want to be this individual but no the heavenly father gave you a lot he gave you a spirit it's about you doing some soul searching and fulfilling everything the heavenly father set forth on your path and then becoming the path onto the to basically shed away the layers all right until you get to the ultimate perfection when Yahweh Shai returns so you're a work in progress progress but you have to actually dwell upon what you are and pro progress towards that, you know, within this faith, your walk, and take up his cross and follow me. So you have to take up your cross. So you got to bear, think about as Yao Shai when he was carrying his cross. And don't forget that whole process. I was going into it when you had Simon, all right, which remember the Lord before he, he, he actually had to bear his cross after suffering at the hands of, you know, uh, the judgment by... Um, uh, Pontius Pilate, you know, basically, you know, being whipped with a cat of nine tails, having the throne, throne, sorry, the crown of um, thorns set upon him, all these things, and then all being spat on, being slapped in the face, all that type of stuff. He had, you know, he prayed unto the Heavenly Father three times that there would be another way, and it wasn't no other way, but. Remember, an angel came down and helped him throughout the process of praying. But he still was, you know, heavy in the spirit. But only me, ultimately, there was help. And, you know, Norman Omens, Shammai one, the right, Simon, um, I forget his name, man. He basically helped bear his, um, his cross. But that just showed his affliction was heard, all right? So your affliction too will be held, heard. So you pray and make supplication unto the Lord. Even if you don't, in the book of Romans 8, it tells you your spirit prays unto the Heavenly Father. So he will give you everything you need to allow you to fulfill your 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 lot. 
All right, in order for you to follow him. Verse 25, for whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. Now, the first part of that verse can be really shown by what? That Maxine, man, that jumper, you know, shooting a J. Um, because basically, when people have taken that, they thought that they would, you know, basically survive all of the things that are coming. But what wind up happening? A lot of them died in droves, right? So that's, that serves as a good um, analogy of dealing with this man in this world and trying to have a life in this place, how much it'll be, a, you know, a, a, to your detriment. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. So whoever will lose his life for my sake, they're going to find it. So if you make the sacrifice, all right, for the Lord, then, man, you're going to be blessed, all right? Because... There ain't no, what, what, as it tells you in Mark 8 uh, and 36, like, what can a man give him in exchange for his soul? What the fuck are you going to sell out for? What, what is it? And this is the thing, this is what led me into the truth, is I remember I got some money when I was 18, no, I was 19, it was like 18, just around my birthday, 18, 19. If it, if I was eighteen, it's probably no more than a couple of weeks when I was eighteen. Mainly nineteen, and that little bit of money is the first time I had a little bit of money in my life. So I got to do everything that I wanted to do in the way I wanted to do it. So I really got to you know show my spirit, and it got people talking. It got me quite some kind of shine, and I liked it. I'm not gonna lie, I liked it at the time. But then there was a day where the, uh, you think the money's going to last forever when you're starting to be like, all right, cool, now I'm going to start going on holiday, do my this, that, and the other, start making moves, then the money's gone. <laughs> the money is shit, man. The money was gone. So that shit just... I didn't want to leave my house, man. I was fucked up in the spirit. I was like, Lord, like, how the hell this happened? But um, I see how people was not fucking with me no more. All the girls had disappeared. These girls running me down. These girls had airing me all throughout, all throughout college, cause I was I was busted. I had like one pair of jeans and one funny pair, one funny pair of jeans that I could afford. No clothes, no whatsoever. So I see the difference. All right, but then I, but then, you know, you had your little moments where you, you know you get money again and you do different things. And then I just got to the point where I was like, what the hell is this? That's what set me on in motion to find, to to, to try and find the, the true meaning of life. Because I was like, this can't be what it's about. Just like getting money, dressing nice, going to the events, keeping up with the Joneses, the trends and all that. I was one of those type of guys. I was one of the the fly guys. Like that's That's what I was into. I still have, you know, I'm still into certain things. But it's not to the point where it's like, oh, it's just, you know, you have a general interest to a certain point. But it's not to the point where, like, my life revolves around it as it did before. So it's just like, what's the meaning of life? Like, it, it's got to be more than this. <laughs> and then, ultimately, like, that's what set me on a journey for the faith. So it's just like once you find this, it's like what what the hell was there? Like what, what for these girls? What what kind of money? Like it's even worse now, cause you're just gonna the thing that's always gonna bear in mind. I'm really rambling through this. Lucky man, I hope you're being edified though. The thing about this money and all this type of stuff, it's fleeting, man. And then you know you're buying these people. They're not really into you. They're into what you you can do for them. All right, as you see. So it even goes into it. It's here. Verse 26. For what is, a man, what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Nike, you, there is nothing on this earth that is, is, can weigh up to the measure of this truth. All right? Nothing. I don't know what you could even imagine you could do because... I've worked even within this, within the faith, because I had a real low moment, and then I got work. This was like probably like it's, it's 
2017, 2016, 2017, coming out of my low moment, and I said, nah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and get high, high flying jobs like where I can get as much money as possible. But um, in that, I was in certain environments, you know, like um, because of where where I was living with a certain, you know, in my living circumstances. It had me close to the city, so I just kind of said, okay, I'm going to try and... I got an advantage because I, I live around the corner from everything. Let me try and, you know, get something where there's a lot of money involved so I can, you know, take care of myself in an adequate manner. And um, in reality, being in those environments, it just made me have more, all the more, more disdain towards, you know, riches and wealth. It just made me more like, man, I don't want it. So you're telling me I need, I want to get money so I can be in these hotels, these restaurants, eating caviar and be around these people. So there ain't... If if you Once you get around it and you see what actually is there, there on offer, it is, it's nothing groundbreaking. It's nothing like, oh, wow, you're just around... The Esau of the of Esau, the most soulless of soulless is is really a, a you know a bad deal. Verse twenty seven: For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father, with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. So you reap what you sow. If you did good, you're gonna reap good. If you sow good, you're gonna reap good. If you sow evil, you're gonna reap evil. So all your actions are being weighed, and everything you do you know, it's going to come back to you. So be very mindful of that. Again, I'm going to ramble because <laughs> I actually said this to someone before. It's like anything I do in this life for me personally, I remember I used to get in trouble, man. I always remember this story. It was one time I was in year seven or eight. Someone stole the fire extinguisher and it was like the junction outside our school. Everyone was playing with it. And me, I like to goof around. I like to, you know, do that type of shit. Be silly and all that. Like, Let me have a go. So I was like, blowing it. Then the head of year come out and he see me playing with it. He said, right, you're coming. You're in detention. You're going to get suspended or whatever he said. I didn't get suspended. But I was, I was like, what? I didn't even bring it out. But I got caught. So I was always the person that got caught in some shit that was, I had nothing to do. So I was just like, ah, oh, man. It's just, it, it was a normal occurrence by that time. I just knew that any time I do something, if I'm in a mix of people doing something, I'm going to get the blame. And by this this time, this this age I'm at, I'm just kind of like, I don't even want to be involved in certain things because I'm just so used to that being a, 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 a thing that it's just, I see that as something through the spirit that has made me more like mindful of, nah, man, you're going to get caught, you're going to get in trouble, so think before you act kind of thing it gave me that kind of mindset all right and that's really saying it's a good thing because again it goes into what was just said for the son of man shall come in the glory of his father with his angels and then he shall reward every man according to his works so be mindful of the things that you do because you will be rewarded according to it and you ain't going to be saying but no he started it and the you were doing it all right Verily I say unto you, there be some standing there which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his king in his kingdom. And this is even a thing with it all. Some men are in this faith right now. You ain't gonna die. This is the last the last time you died was that last lifetime that you lived, and you're gonna walk straight into eternal life. Alright? So that's really where it is. But the point being is that end of the day man you gotta carry your cross and you'll be recorded rewarded for your works because they're being recorded all right so with that i pray you're edified to the next one say shalom shalom <laughs>